Hello and welcome to the Quantizer. Today we're going to talk about running unit tests locally uh, using Google Test for the ESP32 as well as being able to build and deploy it to the ESP32 by setting up two different two different paths and you'll see that where we have a test class in here which is just a simple um, adding two numbers together and we have several unit tests set up where we can run them all at one time and see the results. So if you want to figure out how we did this, just stick around and we'll, we'll show you how it's done. So the first thing we need to do is set up the IDF and uh, we've already done that in our environment, but if you have not, you can come over to the quantizer.com and under tutorials and the unit testing locally, we have the description on how to do this. Uh, so this site will be, uh, the link will be down in the description so you can get directly to here and it shows you how to do the prerequisite software and setting up the environment, but we've already done that. And so we're going to go ahead and skip to the setting up C line section. And that's where we're going to kick it off at. And so over here in C line, we're going to create a new project. We're going to call it unit test and load that up. And then, um, another thing that we're going to do is set it up to have our terminal actually run the IDF inside of um, C line, which we've already set up in, in this, in this C line instance. So we'll show you what we did over here in settings and then in tools and terminal, you can see that it's running a PowerShell and it's executing this export.ps1 script on startup. And that's what's loading in the uh, ESP IDF in there. And so that's how you get that set up and you can test it by .py.exe and yeah, it's, we have access to it. So that's good. And the first thing that we're going to do is let's just come through here and let's unload the CMake project. That way it doesn't try to keep updating and doing weird stuff on us as we, as we do some stuff in here. So let's delete that. Actually, let's delete all of this here. Let's delete everything. And let's create a new directory called main. And it's important that you create this directory called main and name it main because the ESP IDF when you're running through its build path, it will uh, it will look for this directory and this uh, C file main.cpp specifically. So uh, we actually don't need the header. Didn't need to create the class because I just created the CPP file. So uh, in here, we're going to create the main.cpp and we're also going to create a CMake list.txt and we're going to put in the line that we need to register it with the IDF. So this is when we're building it uh, to deploy it to the ESP32. So this main.cpp file, we're actually only gonna run on the ESP32. We're not gonna run it as part of our unit test. We're gonna put our unit test in a library and then link those libraries in here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is just uh, run, some, run some info about the ESP32 when it, when it boots up, about some of the chip info, and then what counts for 10 seconds and restarts, it's generic. Um, startup thing for an ESP32 and uh, this may not CPP, right? or excuse me, this CMake list is going to register it with the IDF. And because it's part of that IDF registration process, we'll have access to things that are inside of a folder called components, which we'll go ahead and create now directory components. And we're going to put our library in here in a minute. So um, let's make sure we have everything up there. And before we before we go ahead and create our, our library, let's let's add Google test because we're going to need that. So uh, you can see down here in the terminal, it's ls where we're at. Okay, um, let's make a directory called lib. And this one, you can you can call it whatever you want. I decided to call it lib uh, or libs. And let's get, uh, let's, let's do a clone. So git or let's cd into it first, cd libs git clone tech tech cursive and let's get the link over here for github and again if you uh the link will be down in the description where you can just follow our our page we have on this and and just just copy and paste stuff like we're doing so that got google test for us in the libs we cloned it and all of its other repos that were in there so we got google mock and google test so we're we're ready to we're ready to start creating our unit test so that's cool um, let's go ahead and create our directory called, let's call it test class. 
So this will be our component that will get auto loaded when we're doing the IDF path and then we'll, we'll bring it in uh, with our CMake files when we're doing the unit test path. So let's do that and then let's create a new class. This time we do want both the header and the, and the CPP files. Let's do it this way. Okay, and in the header, I'm just gonna copy this over. So this is just defining the constructor and the method on there, and it's gonna take two integers as arguments. And inside of the class, we'll go ahead and define that method, and it's just gonna add X and Y and, and return that. Pretty simple, uh, just to show us how to do some unit tests. And so let's, uh, let's, get, let's get onto the unit testing part, so the cool part. So let's, do, let's make a new class, or a new, I don't want a class, I just want a, uh, let's make a new CPP file. This is source file. So uh, test class um, .cpp. That's uh, test class underscore test. There we go. And then we're going to paste in our code we have here. And so what this does is it creates a test fixture, and that has a setup and a teardown method. And in the setup method, we're defining a new test class that we're gonna run each time. And then we're gonna, we have three different tests that we have. The first one is the golden path. It's going to just add one and two together and that should give us three. And then we're gonna test adding a negative number to get negative one. And then we're gonna test adding a, 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 a decimal and a hexadecimal number. So one plus zero x one zero should give us 17. And so that's what that does. Um, we need to add only a couple more files. Uh, the first one is the CMake file so it knows what to do. So let's add the cmakelist.txt and I'm gonna copy this stuff in here. And you can see that there is a if else statement here. It says, if this variable is set, then execute this path, otherwise do this one. And this path is for the ESP32 build. So whenever we're doing a normal build, uh, we're gonna come down here and just use the uh, ESPIDF commands that will uh, register the component. That's how main.cpp has access to it. Uh, because it registers it. But anyways, uh, for our uh, unit test, for using Google test, we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna create this, create two variables for headers in the source files, and then we're going to add it to a library. And that library will be linked uh, later on. Um, and so let's go ahead and show you how we do that. So now that we have the component and Google test in here, and we have our main file. We're gonna create our top level CMake file and I'm going to head and get that info, bring it in. And so there are two sections, well, three kind of, um, this first section is a setup part where if that G test variable is set, it will execute this stuff. And then another one that's an if else for that. Uh, the only reason why there's two sections, you could, you could, you could copy this stuff and, and paste it right here and that'd be okay. Uh, we just, whenever we have more complex CMake files, sometimes it's useful to put this common stuff in its own its own place. Um, and so if we're going to run the Google test path, it's going to come through here, grab that Google test directory, and then um, include it, and then create the executable, and then link uh, some some libraries to it. And so uh, that'll, be, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, otherwise, it will just do the normal IDF path where it brings in their, their master build CMake file right here that has all of their logic in it. So with that, we should have everything we need other than the two configuration set. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go File, Settings, and then in Build and Execution, right here under CMake, we have this normal debug one, which is good. We just need to modify it slightly. We're going to add two switches here. One of them, this one right here, suppresses a warning, and this one uses Ninja, I believe. Um, and we're going to create another one, and we're going to call it gtest for Google test. And we're going to make this one a debug as well. And then we're going to give it the same two switches plus one more. So it's going to bring in the thing that suppresses the warning using Ninja, and then it's going to define that variable, that gtest variable, and it's going to set it to true. And so that's how we're going to tell it, hey, do the do the Google test path instead of the IDF path. And that's how we're able to control that. So let's apply it, say okay. And now that we've got that, let's, uh, let's load the CMake project and let's, let's see it kick off. So click 
click on this down here so we can see what's going on. It's doing both the debug and the G-test versions right now. And we'll be back once it's done doing all the stuff. Okay, it finished. So both the debug and the G-test pass have both done their thing. And you can see down here, we got a whole bunch of build configurations in here. Um, it's it's kind of neat. It's just a different ones the IDF sets up. And so you can actually uh, build the app and you know you can build all those individually in here. I've done that before it works. Um, or we can do our Google test path right here. So that's pretty cool. So you can run it, run it from here if you'd like, or you can come into uh, the unit test. Let's go into our components where our actual tests are. And the way I find it to be pretty useful is once this thing catches up, there we go. It can, we can actually run them individually. So I'll run this one, for example. Let's do run. Okay, so that ran and passed, so that's great. Uh, you can also run them all at the same time if you click right here, run the test picture, and now it will run all three of them. And there you go. And just so you can see it, if it if we got a, a bad assertion in there, let's run them all again, and we'll see this one fail. There you have it. So building your uh, your projects this way using Google Test and uh, and the CMake files in this way allows you to uh, do test development or test driven development, which can really just help out in a lot of ways. It can help you build things much quicker. And I just really enjoy that way of programming. I find it to be a more uh, stress-free programming experience to do TDD. Uh, and, and that's how we can set it up with the ESP32. So the last thing I wanna show you is that the build path for the ESP32 also works. Uh, I've gone ahead and went into main.cpp and I included that testclass.h. So if I control click it, you'll see that we can, we can view it and uh, I can, can find it. And then I added this uh, instantiating it and doing this loop from zero to 100 where I just take the iterator and I add five to it. So it should just be the iterator plus five as we loop up. So let's go ahead and uh, build that. So over here in the terminal, I'm going to back up one directory so that I'm in the root and then do an idf.py.exe p com three. And I know it's com three because inside of my um, device manager, you can see that that ch340 is com three right there and then do a build and flash. So this will both build and then flash the device and, uh, and we'll check it out once it's done. Okay, so it just finished building and flashing the device. I'm gonna go and monitor it now. So if I do the IDF, .py, .exe, p com 3 and monitor. We will start to see, okay, we're currently in the reboot. So once it's done resetting, we'll then see the the iterator where it's going to add 100, 101 times actually. So yep, there you go. Adding five to the iterator, bam, and it works. All right, so that's how you set up the ESP32 with C Lion so that you can run unit tests locally using Google Test and also be able to deploy. Uh, I found this workflow to work out pretty well for me so that I can have a lot of control over what I'm doing um, and also be able to do test driven development with ESP32. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And if there's anything else you'd like us to see, you know, comment below and we'd love to hear from you to see what your thoughts are. Don't forget to visit us at www.thequantizer.com where we have a lot of tutorials and uh, projects and just different neat stuff um, that you can come check out. So thanks and have a nice day.